Hey Java students, this is Dennis here. Welcome back to Array 101 Part 2. We left off uh, where I just created the array. I don't believe I populated it. Uh, right now I am about to populate it. So I did combine the, uh, the reference variable and the uh, object into one statement. So here's my array of size elements. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to populate this array with a for loop. So notice one thing I did in this for loop is I said E size equal E size. Well, that sounds pretty stupid, but in C, you could just say E size, but in Java, you can't. And I don't want to default E size to zero, so I want E size to start where E size is. So uh, it's kind of redundant, but it works. So this enables me, whatever E size is, to continue to add three new elements uh, onto the array. Now, this code doesn't have any air checking or anything, but it would work. So here I am uh, loading three elements at a time into this array. Uh, here's my output statement to enter a value, and here's my scan. So let's watch that run real quick. Enter the size for the array. Let's call it 150. Enter that uh, value one of the array, anything I want. There's value two of the array, and there's value three. And now that program has stopped. So the next thing you would say is, okay, uh, Dennis, how do I know that actually worked? Uh, and I'm going to tell you, we will call a function called print array. And we will pass it the array. So that function has not been written yet, and that's the next thing I want to show you. So here's the call to the function print array. We know that this is a void function because it's not on the right side of an assignment operator and because it is not uh, an argument to another function. So this should be a void function. Now notice I have this divider line underneath main. You don't have to do that, but I like it because I'm going to place my functions under main. So public, static. Static means this method is going to be long. If I said function, apologize. This method is going to be long to uh, the class apple. Uh, void because it is not value returning print array and here is the arrays of type int and I can name it down here anything I want so I'll just to demonstrate that I'm going to name it a for array so this is the end of my function and in here I'm simply going to output each element in the array so basically I'm going to do what I did here uh, but oh my bad down here I also want to pass e size so that I only print out the effective size so when I call the array I'm going to pass it the array and the effective size okay so now down here I'm going to loop from i to i less than the effective size. A little different than what I did up here in the uh, main program, main part of the program. And this is going to be and so on. So I'm going to just let you take a look at this. Notice Java is self Okay. So here is so those errors went away. So I'm going to print the value, and this is just going to be i. So real common and now, uh, next, uh, oh wait, don't want this at all. This is output. That was my input. Uh, all right. So what I'm going to have is in my output, I'm going to have a statement S Y S O control enter, and I'm going to print uh, something like and then you can do. I'll let you look at these. But next value at location. Line are real important. Next flow. How about we make it look like an array? Next long, uh, next line does what I was trying to say, and it reads the entire line of text into, or entire is line of text into a single string. All right, so I want to use this input here, input dot next. Okay, so this so now goes away because I'm not loading, from the and that should be all I have to say. Stored here in this size variable. So now when I create this array, it should have a Except size. Except for I need to initialize i. I. Okay. Uh, that's what I get for cutting and pasting. All right, so let's run this and see what happens. 
hopefully I know so when I run it, what's the size of the array? Doesn't matter. What's in element number one? A 44, a 33, and a 77. At location zero, this is from this function, is the 44, the 1, and the uh, 77. Uh, Pretty so simple. Whatever I I can I can call this. Uh, as a matter of fact, what I, next thing I want to show you is instead of having this code here, because it's like a bad place for it. Why don't I pass load array? And I pass the array. And I pass e size. Okay. And moving on to part two. And so all of this code I do that, I want to will go bye bye. I want to show you how we can take so I'm going to load it and then I'm going to print it. And this line now, what I want you to notice so is to, uh, my ray two. I can this is an object. My Back in the olden days of C, that would be called pass by reference, and this is a value. So this function is going to be a value returning function because as I add things to the array, I'm going to Pass back the new e size through the method through the method, and notice since this is by reference because it's an object, the any changes will be automatically evident. All right, so I'm going to load the array down here. Keeping these in alphabetical order, and here I go. Okay, I lied. Yeah, I'm going to do a summary. So here's my quick summary. And it's going to return me. Integer. Uh, one, one My summary Oops. says um, Just array that of size. So I'm going to return an integer, and its name is going to be uh, load array. And the first parameter is going to be an integer array or an integer array, either way. Uh, and the second one is going to be the e size. Okay, so notice immediately once I mustache up, I have an error. I have an error, and I would expect that. And if we hover it over, uh, this function does not end in a semicolon, so that's kind of where it's yelling at me for now. So let's just assume everything is good. And I uh, say uh, int result, and I say uh, equal e size. Now, notice I'm still going to have an error. Let's take a look at what this says. I, if you recall, before I paused for one minute, I had that uh, for loop in here, and that was screwing me up. I wanted to get a red squiggly, which I do have, and now notice. This method is uh, must return a value of type int. So I don't have a return statement in this method. So all methods that are value returning should return result. So my goal here is to set result in the middle here. So now I'm going to take this for loop that we had before. But this time I'm going to say result. And here this is going to be result. And here this is going to be result. And the name of my array is just the letter A down here. Notice now I have another problem, and that's this input line. Because input was not defined in the scope of this method. So that's a problem too. And let me show you a cool way to avoid that. Okay, so this input is not defined inside the scope of this method load array. So here's a way, it's not cheating either because as I say in any of my assignments, no global variables, but we can have global constants all day long. So what I can do is I can come up here in this class above all my methods and I can create a global constant. So final makes it a constant, static, out inside of a class as a class variable makes it global to this entire class. So any method in the class Apple will have a scanner named input set up. So since that is now the, a fact, I do not need this anymore in here because uh, it's already set up. And notice down here uh, where I had that error, it went away. So I'm going to run this as an example. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, 
load it twice so that you can see this happening. So I'm going to load it twice and print it once. So here I go, watch it work. So first thing it asks is the size of the array. The second it says, what am I putting in the first element, the second element, and the third. Now notice, that's all from this call right here. Immediately it's going to come here. And notice we know E size is working because this is going to say 4 next. There it is, 4, 5, and 6. Here's my output, and everything's good, kind of. Now here's what I did not do, is I did not make sure I did not exceed the uh, the length of the array as I loaded it. So just going back into this load array function, one thing you should make sure is you don't exceed the boundary of the array. So this and condition, anytime I continue to add to the array while result is less than the length, Anytime result equals the length, I stop. So after I try to load it, and there's other ways to do this. You can do this up before the uh, for loop. Uh, I print the statement, the array is full if there's no room. So let's watch this work. So I'm going to make an array of size 2, and I'm going to try to add three things to it. So there's a 12, there's a 34, and it says the array is full, no more room. So this array is full came from the first time I tried to load it, and then I came in to try to load it again, and it immediately tells me that. So that saves me from exceeding the boundary of the array. And that was a lot. Again, I'm at 11 minutes, so I think I'm going to come down and stop. So in summary of part two of this video, um, you typically load an array with a for loop, just like you did in other languages. You can pass an array to methods, not functions, methods. You do not need to pass them back since they are objects. Objects are automatically passed by reference. This means what happens in the called method to the array also happens to the array in the caller. Remember you have these built-in methods like length, which is the same as size, and whatever you do in your code, make sure you never exceed the size of the array. See you in the next video.